Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, we will learn how to generate a sinusoidal PWM signal in the ANSI Simplorer software and how we can simulate a single phase inverter. So, first, we review this reference and then we try to do an example in software so this is the reference and here in the chapter 8 inverters we have this section pulse with modulation output so yes this is a commonly used method for switching of three phase inverters and single phase inverters so I decided to make a video regarding this topic so pulse with modulation PWM provides a way to decrease the total harmonic distortion of the load current a PWM inverter output with some filtering can generally meet THD requirements more easily than the square wave switching scheme. We will discuss this later. The unfiltered PWM output will have a relatively high THD, but the harmonics will be at much higher frequencies than for a square wave so the filtering is easier in pwm the amplitude of the output voltage can be controlled with the modulating waveforms reduced filter requirements to decrease harmonics and the control of the output voltage amplitude are two distinct advantages of pwm what are disadvantages? More complex control circuits and increased losses due to more frequent switching. So, this method, PWM, in this method, the control of switches for a sinusoidal PWM output requires a reference signal that is called modulating or control signal which is a sinusoid in this case and a carrier signal which is a triangular wave so we need to have two waveforms a reference signal and a carrier signal so in the next two type of schemes are discussed the bipolar SPWM and unipolar. In this video, we will discuss the bipolar. And before going further, let's generate these two signals and show them in the software. So, here I create a new project and add a new simple order design and I want to pick up the sign time function and triangular so from here tools time functions you can pick a sine wave and a triangular wave so I have a sine wave and a triangular wave this is the reference signal. Let me change the name. This is the reference signal. What is the amplitude? Amplitude is equal to 1. Frequency 50 Hz. And this is the carrier signal. So, the amplitude also equal to 1. 
Yes, these are outputs, all these two blocks. But I don't need to show these outputs. So, output display, show pin, no, the value, and also for this block. Save. Let's run the simulation. Let's set the analysis setup. The stop time equal to 20 milliseconds. The minimum time is step one, maximum time is step 10 microseconds. And run the simulation. Okay. So analyze. I want to plot the outputs of these two blocks. So from here, results, rectangular, plot, the reference signal.val. Val is the output of this block. Yes, this property. So we plot the reference value.val and carrier signal.val. So here you can see these two signals, the carrier and the reference signal. So also you can set the phase shift of the carrier or reference signal. For example, if I set the phase of the carrier signal equal to 90, electric degrees and run the simulation again this is the wave form or if i increase the frequency so i want to multiply the reference frequency by 10 the frequency of the carrier signal is much higher than the frequency of the reference signal. So in this case, I considered it 10 times the frequency of the reference signal. So let's run the simulation. And here are waveforms. So this is the sinusoidal waveform and this is the angular waveform. The amplitudes are equal to one. So here are two signals and how we can do this bipolar switching. This is the logic. We are familiar with the logic. When the value of the sign signal is higher than the triangular one, we set the output voltage equal to the positive VDC. And when the value of the sign signal is lower than the triangular one, we set it equal to negative of VDC. So here you can see this circuit, H bridge inverter, single phase. In the bipolar switching, when the value of the sign signal is higher than the triangular one, we turn on S1 and S2. Otherwise, we turn off S1 and S2 and turn on S3 and S4. So we have positive VDC on output or negative VDC. These are ideal switches. Here you can see the explanation here. So before reading the definition and considerations let's generate the model of the h bridge inverter here we have the ideal switch in software ideal switch s1 s2 s3 and s4 also we should consider a resistive inductive load i'm going to Consider this example. To be able to check the numbers that we get from the software and the number that we have here in this example. So let's pick up a 
رزیستور اینداکتور and rotate them and complete the circuit yes so the value of the resistance is equal to 10 ohm 10 the value of the inductance is 20 milli henrys 20 milli henrys also you can show the values i want to show the value of r and also show the value of inductance to avoid any confusion so we have set the values correct and also we need to place a DC source E1 its value is equal to 100 volts yes the DC input to the bridge is 100 volt and let's complete the circuit Yes. Also, I want to place a ground here. So press Ctrl G and place a ground here. So the circuit is complete. Now we have to generate signals to turn on and turn off the switches. I am going to use the state block. So using a state block, we can do a more precise simulation as we discussed in the previous videos. So from here, states, I pick up a state one and one. I need two because I have two states in this circuit in one state S1 and S2 are on. These are off and the next state is when S3 and S4 is on and these are off. So we need to use two transitions also and place these two states. So let me change the name of this state s1 and s2 are on here s1 and s2 are off so we should move from this state to this state by a condition and also move from this state to this state by a condition also what are conditions? In this state, we have two actions. I add a new action. Here, this is control signal 1 and control signal 2. This is 1, this is 0. So, also let's show these two actions for this state. I am going to control the switch S1 and S2 with control signal 1. So when the control signal 1 is 1, S1 and S2 are on and otherwise they are off. So we control the S1 by control signal 1 and this by control signal 1 this switch by control signal 2 yes and this one also by control signal 2 so in this state we need to add also to set action type control signal 1 control signal 2 this is 0 and 
this is one. So show these two cases. Yes. The negation of this state. So what is the transition condition? This is the transition condition when we move from the state one to the state two. When the value of the sign signal is lower than the triangular one, we turn on S3 and S4. So here we should consider this condition. When the value of the reference signal dot val, yes, this is the reference signal. And this is its value. Reference signal dot val is lower than the carrier signal dot val. Let's show the condition and copy it. We should move from this state to this state. Otherwise, the carrier the reference signal is higher than the carrier signal. We should move from this state to this state. This is the carrier signal. So, to start the simulation, we need to consider one state active. So, I set this state active to start the simulation, initial condition. So, now let's set the properties of these two signals, such as the frequency and amplitude. But before that, let's review this section, PWM definitions and considerations. So, we have this important definition and considerations. The first definition is the frequency modulation ratio MF. So the Fourier series of the PWM output voltage has a fundamental frequency which is the same as the reference signal and harmonic frequencies exist at and around multiples of the switching frequency. So we have this definition, frequency modulation ratio, that is defined as the carrier frequency divided by the reference signal frequency or F triangular one divided by F sinusoidal. We know that increasing the carrier frequency increases the frequency at which harmonics occur. And a disadvantage is higher losses due to higher switching. So, I want to define a variable MF here in my model. I can consider a constant block. Here also in search you can write this, a constant. Let's place two. This is the F base, the, it, its value, it's uh, the value of the reference signal frequency is equal to 60 Hertz. Okay, this is the base frequency. So here I write 60 Hertz. And change the name here. This is F base, base frequency. This is MF. What is the value of MF? Is 21. The frequency modulation ratio is 21. In this case. So, here I set the amplitude and frequency just by setting these numbers here, but I want to set it by those constants. So frequency, show pin, 
input yes and the amplitude yes i want to set the amplitude and frequency here by these blocks so this is the base frequency and what is the frequency of the carrier signal the frequency show pin yes is multiplication of the constant the base frequency times mf so here i need to use a multiplier this number by this one this is the carrier frequency what is the amplitude of this sine waveform we should read the second definition amplitude modulation ratio the amplitude modulation ratio ma is defined as the ratio of the amplitude of the reference signal divided by carrier signal so this is the vm sine divided by vm triangular one and when the value of ma is lower than or equal one the amplitude of the fundamental frequency of the output voltage v1 is linearly proportional to ma you know the amplitude of the fundamental harmonic of the output voltage is equal to ma times vdc and when the value of ma is higher than one we have a nonlinear relationship you know we can do a parametric analysis to calculate that graph we have saturation yes when we increase the value of ma so here i define let me copy this constant paste it here I define this variable MA in our example it's equal to 0.8 the value of MA is equal to 0.8 so I write 0.8 here and now everything is okay we can run the simulation we set the value of ma base frequency the frequency modulation ratio mf and run the simulation so let's analyze and calculate the value of the load current so here i can add modify report add the value of the output voltage to measure the value of output voltage we need to pick up a voltmeter from here basic elements measurements electrical voltmeter vm1 so let's place the voltmeter here and run the simulation again yes so this is vm1.v i want to add the trace yes let me zoom here for example you can see the value of the carrier signal reference and the output voltage when the reference is higher than the carrier output voltage is 100 volt otherwise is negative 100 volts so as you can see here we are doing the simulation correct and we are generating a sinusoidal pwm waveform and also you can plot the load current that is the current of the r1 the load resistance this is the load current also you can plot the load voltage yes to plot the current and voltage on the same graph 
and also you can calculate the RMS values or peak values of these two waveforms. So the amplitude of the fundamental harmonic is 80 volt and here is the value of the current corresponding to the fundamental frequency 6.39 what is the peak value of the current is equal to 7 amps yes we considered uh, here only in this equation the fundamental one and we know that in this current we have higher harmonics and the value is higher the maximum value also here the value of the voltage for higher harmonics are calculated and corresponding power is calculated that is the topic of the next video okay so in this video just we did the simulation we generated the circuit and we learned how to generate the sign pwm to generate these graphs in the next video we will discuss the harmonic content generated by bipolar switching yes this graph and we will calculate the amplitude of the fundamental harmonic and the amplitude of the voltage for higher harmonics thanks for watching